hope you're all having a super week and today I'm going to be making a shirt dress and I would love it if you could sew along with me today. So it's this simplicity pattern and it's 8546 and we're going to be making version A. Now everything will be linked in a bundle below so should you wish to sew along all you have to do is click on that link and you'll have everything you need to get started. So let's take a look now at the fabric that we'll be using today. So we're going to be using this beautiful Visco Shelley in Sunprint Palms. Look at all those wonderful colours. It's a beautiful print. It's 100% viscose. It's 150 centimetres wide. And it's a light to medium weight fabric. So this will make a fabulous summer shirt dress. So if we take a look at the pattern, here we have version A that we are making. Now, should you wish to sew along with us and make any of the other versions, you can do that, but just make sure you stop at the appropriate steps. A lot of the instructions will be very similar. So let's turn the pattern over so we can see the different versions here on the back. And version A has this tie here. So if you would like to order all the products to get started on this project with me today, all you have to do is click on the link below and you will receive the Simplicity Pattern, the Viscose Chalet in some print palms, or you could choose a different fabric if you still want to come back to this video later and make it in something different. You'll receive a matching thread, some buttons, and some interfacing. Now, the Minerva Craft Club is a great way to get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. So it would be lovely if you could go ahead and join today. Anything that you buy with us today will be included in that deal. Another great way to connect is to get involved in our sewing community. So you can create a free account. And this means that you'll be able to connect with like-minded sewers from all over the world. And you can share posts. You can collect all your fabrics and notions and ideas for future projects in one place. Get to know people who are like-minded like you, who love sewing. And connect with them from all over the world. It's a really super place to share your sewing hobby. And I know I have lots of fun sharing my posts on there and gaining inspiration from other people. It's completely free, so why not go ahead and do that now? Now, before we begin today, we want to take our fabric and wash and prepare it as you would normally. So if you normally wash and tumble dry or line dry, go ahead and do that now. And give it a press because we don't want to spoil our makes once we've spent lots of time on them. Then we're going to take our pattern and have a look. Now, as I said, we're making version A, but you can follow along with any of the other versions should you wish to. A lot of the steps are very similar. It's just a different length in some of these versions here on the front cover. And this version, D and E, just has a stand collar. It doesn't have a full collar, so you'd be just leaving off that final step of adding the collar flap there. They all have a button band facing so you can follow along with that step and there is some variation in cuffs. So we have frills on this one, we have a deep cuff on version C and a cut out shoulders on D and A we have a turn up with another button so that's a really nice feature. Take a tape measure, check your measurements on the back. We don't want to go for a standard dress size because these can vary and they can also vary from pattern to pattern. So please do check that as well. And then when you're ready and you're happy with your sizing, we're going to cut our pattern pieces. So let's go and do that together now. So we'll go through the pattern pieces first of all. So here is your front piece and this is for versions A, B, C, D and E. 
So the front we're going to cut two. We need to make a note of these lines here. So we've got a fold line here, here. We've got the centre front. This is the grain line. Adjustment line to make it uh, longer or shorter, depending on your height. Here is your waistline. Make a note of the notches and the circles and the darts here. And the notches and the circles on the side here for the pockets. And here we have our curved hem. So we're cutting here for view A. If you're cutting for C, D or E, you cut here. Here we have the back piece which is cut on the fold and here is my fold at this side. So you're going to cut one on the fold, make a note of this broken line here, the notches, again the small circles, the adjustment line and your hemline depending on what view you are making. Here we have our sleeve and our cuff piece. So the sleeve, we're going to cut two. This is your grain line here. Note your circles and your notches. Now you cut your sleeve depending on which version you're making. So there's different lengths. Also your line to lengthen or shorten. You want to make a note of the pleat markings, the dart. This is our view here for view A and we've got pleats and you need to mark these arrows, this is the direction that your pleats will uh, go and your notch here. And then on your cuff you need to mark for your buttons or buttonholes here, your circles, your notches and your fold line. So you're going to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing for the cuff. So here we have our yoke this is your grain line for the yoke and here is your centre back. We're going to cut one of this piece. Mark your notches and your small circles. Here is your collar. This is the grain line here. Centre back. Mark notches and circles. You're going to cut two of fabric and one of interfacing. And here is your neck band. Two of fabric and one of interfacing again. Here we have your tie end for view A. You're going to cut four of this. This is your grain line. Mark these circles. Your pocket, again, you're going to cut four. Here's the grain. Make a note of the notches and circles. Then we have a continuous lap. You're going to cut two of this one. And here we have a tab for view A. So remember, on view A, we're making this tab so we can roll up the sleeves. So we need to make a note of this circle here. This is your grain line, your buttonhole, and you're going to cut four. Also cut two of interfacing for this one. Now we're ready to begin making our dress. So first of all, you want to change your machine needle to a universal size 70, that's what I use, or you could try it on a piece of fabric first and see what works best for you. So that's what I'm using today. Always check your needle though before you begin because sometimes they get a little bit blunt and then that can affect your stitching. When you've done this, you also want to wind half of your thread onto your spool so that you're ready to start. Take your front pieces I'm going to do some stay stitching around this neck edge. So from here going to the centre. 1.3 centimetres away from the edge. Also do that across the back neck edge. After that we're going to make our darts. So let's do our stay stitching first of all. Oh, also let me mention this before we begin. You want to put a strip of interfacing all the way down both your front pieces up to where it says interfacing here. That was not very really clear on the pattern markings I didn't feel so it is on the pattern piece but then when you're cutting out it's not listed separately. So cut a strip and you've got your markings here look at the top. So I've done mine a little wider so you can do it just up to there if you wish. But iron that on down both sides before we start. 
So here's my stay stitching along my front neck edge and then we're going to do it on the back. So here we have the yoke. So we want to do it around the neck of the yoke here. going to make our darts. So locate your markings on the side here and bring those together with right sides facing and then you're working towards your marking. Now again I have a pin in, this is something I do a lot, you can't always see a chalk mark so I use a pin so that's why that's there. So we're working towards our marking here. Keep it gradual, don't just go off at a sudden angle. And then not your threads at this end. Now you're going to take your front pieces you're going to turn it in to the first fold mark here at the top and then you're going to turn it in again. Now, as it didn't stay, I'm sure you could probably have left uh, the interfacing off there, but I just feel that gives a much crisper edge and will be much nicer for when you're making your buttonholes also. So press it in on that first line, then turn it in again, press it again on that line so you've got this nice band on the inside now you're going to baste down this all the way to 12.5 centimeters from the bottom edge. So baste that in position now so it doesn't move around. going to take our tie ends now and make those so get the tie end pieces and we're going to place them right sides facing so we've got four pieces we're going to place them like this and this end is going to your dress so we're going to leave that end open we're going to stitch all the way around it's going to a point and then we're going to poke it through Just be careful your fabric doesn't move around while you're uh, stitching these together because that can make your belt lie a little funny. Now when you've made up your belt pieces, give them a good press. Then we're going to attach them to the front of our dress uh, panels at the front. Now don't worry if you've lost your markings, just place your pattern piece back on top of it and remark them. So you have a marking here and a marking here and you're going to place your belt or your tie ends between those markings like this. So pin it in position and now we're going to base that in place. Now you're going to bring your broken lines together on the back. So right sides together, this is your back piece, flip it over like this. Bring that marking for the broken line together. We're just going to stitch here a little at the top. Then when you've done that, we can press this flat. So watch what I'm doing. So you pull it with your fingers like this. Stitch across here then press it flat before we stitch it to our yoke piece. So here it's made a pleat then on the right side look. Here is our pleat. Stitch across the top of it to keep it in place and then you can iron it down flat. Place your yoke piece on, right sides facing, matching the notches here. centre back point I've got a creaky chair 
don't know if you can hear that on the uh, video <laughs> and then your notches here so we're going to stitch across this top here and then we're going to edge finish it or overlock we have 1.5 centimeter seam allowances unless I stay otherwise from now on <laughs> Gonna make sure everything's uh, lying flat underneath before I go over this central part. Just adjust it if you need to. Now you're going to attach your front to your back. At the shoulder seam. So you want to pin it in position so here we have our notches on our shoulders and here is our centre front. Sometimes I like to try it on just after I've uh, done the shoulder point because I'm quite small around the top and the shoulders so I like to try it out first and make sure that it's just right for me so you might want to do the same. It just sometimes means that I need to take that shoulder seam in a little deeper. But if you do do that, please bear in mind that it will affect how your collar sits. So you may need to take a little bit out of the collar also if you do that. If it's only tiny, it won't really matter, but please do check if you do try that. going to overlock those now. Apply interfacing to one of your collar stand pieces. So that's this long curved piece like this. And then you're going to attach it to your neck edge. So what you want is your clipped edge and you're also going to clip on your neck here. So you've already got some markings in. I would make a central marking, maybe put a pin there because that always helps and then clip around it then as you can see this is the top and this here is the bottom this is the bit that's going to your shirt dress now so when you're pinning it just make sure that you're matching up these notches and your band does extend one centimeter beyond this pressed edge that you've done here with the facing at the front so it sticks out like this look so I'm going to pin that all the way along shoulder seams going towards the back now you can put your interfacing on one side of your collar piece then with right sides facing you're going to make up your collar now you're not going to stitch this notched edge here you're going to stitch around up this side around this curved edge and down the other side with a one centimeter seam on your collar. Interfacing is extending a little bit further, so I'm just ignoring that. Trim that away, that's just a little bit of uneven cutting. Clip your corners. And trim around it and you can also snip round the curved edge so this outer curve here you can snip into it before you can understitch 
your facing as far as possible on your collar, press it and then we're going to base these raw edges together. So just machine baste it after you've pressed it, making sure that those notches still line up. So facing side to your collar band, you're going to pin your collar to the collar band matching the notches, the centre back point and you have this curve left here look. So either side this is how much you have. Make sure it's even, you might need to play around with that a little if it's not. Then we're going to stitch that in place. So what I like to do at this point is if you pin your two sides together like this, make sure that your collar pieces line up here, your stitching line, and also your seam line here where it meets the dress. And then just check that these pieces are exactly in line because that's going to make a difference when you come to stitch round here, how it will look at the front. So if you check it now, you can see maybe you've done a seam, you might have done a seam bigger on one side than the other without realising it, or the same here. So just check that that stitching is in line and that these pieces line up before you go any further. Now turn under 1.5 centimetres and press on the single notched edge of your other neckband, so this is the facing piece, and then you're going to stitch it directly over the top. So we're going to stitch up here, along this edge, matching your notches, and down this side here. So next we're going to uh, insert our pockets. So you want to take a pocket piece and with the right side facing the right side you're going to match this notch here. And also these were your circle marks but I've made a little clips on mine so I can match them up. So that's right sides facing. Just going to pin that in place. And you do this on each piece of your dress panels. We're going to stitch down from this marking here to here. Do that on all four pieces. So both sides of your back, both sides of your front. Stitch those in place then press it outwards And when we've pressed it outwards, we can do some understitching here. So press the seam this way towards the pocket. I'll do mine in a moment and I'll just show you first what I mean. So just a few millimetres on the inside of this seam with your seams underneath going towards the pocket stitch down there like this and this will just stop your pocket um, from sort of rolling to the outside and showing once it's all pressed next you're going to bring your front and back pieces together so here we have our side seam so this is our underarm, so I've pinned it under the arm, down the side, and our pocket's lying outwards. Now you've got your belt here. Make sure that your belt is tucked in and out of the way. You might want to pin it with a safety pin first to keep it from getting caught in the sides. So we're going to stitch down to here, to this marking that we made, to this circular marking. Back tack here, you can go around your pocket to here. Back tag and you're going to come down your seam to the bottom from there. So we're going to do that now on both sides.
So you can finish off your seams after, so either overlock or zigzag. I'm just going around this now to keep it in place. at each point as you come around the pocket make sure you um, do a few tacking stitches there just go over it a few times just to make sure it's strong so your hands will be going in and out of your pocket so now we're moving on to making our sleeves so on your sleeves we've got these pleats at the bottom so you need to bring the broken line and the dotted line together and I've pinned mine here you can see and that needs to go in the direction of the arrows on each sleeve. Then we've also got, I think I referred to it as a dot before, it's not a dot. <laughs> this marking here, this stitch marking. So I've marked mine on with the pencil. You're going to stitch along these lines and then we're going to cut in between. You need to be really careful you don't cut your stitching. So we're just going to baste across where we've pinned our pleats a few stitches across here and we're also going to do that stitching line where I've marked and then we're going to snip between it. So just put a few stitches along the bottom there where you've made your pleats. And then I have my marking here. So if you, I'm going to put a slightly smaller stitch first of all. Go over this, these lines. And then just in there, really careful, like we're going to snip up the centre of it. So just take care that you don't cut into any of those little stitches. Just like this. Press under 6mm on the, onto the wrong side of your continuous lap and then you're going to apply it to the wrong side where you've just slashed and stitched here. So we're going to stitch that in place now. Now turn it back on itself and stitch and then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch it on the inside across here so that on the outside it will be like this. Apply interfacing to two of your tab sections and then you're going to stitch them together with a facing piece you've got four pieces in total so right sides facing we're going to stitch round there leaving this side open fold your edges of your tab into the inside pin it on the inside of your sleeve at the mark position so we're going to stitch it along here it does say to do your buttonholes now but I like to do mine all at once so you might like to do that as well so I'm leaving my buttonhole I'm going to do it when I do the rest of my buttonholes so I'm going to stitch this in place on both sides Move that up a little bit. Stitch your side seam of your sleeves. When you've done this, you want to apply interfacing to your cuff pieces and turn up the unnotched edge and give it a press. Then you're going to apply it to the bottom of your sleeve so you want your notched edges to line up so here is my notch Keeping it in place
pin it all the way around stitch on your cuffs You can trim this excess away, fold it back and you're going to stitch down here and then trim this away and turn it to the right side. So I'll show you before I trim my excess fabric away. Like this. Stitch through all layers of your cuff. You may want to do your buttonholes at this point in your buttons or leave them while you're doing the rest of them, which is what I'm going to do. Now we're ready to set in our sleeves. So you want to take a sleeve and turn it the right way around. And then take your dress the wrong way around. You're going to pop your hand inside your sleeve, like this, and put it inside your dress. Then you'll find the notch matches up here, so we pin it. Your underarm seam, pin that in place, make sure that lines up. And your two notches here, so there look two notches and then we've got two notches on the sleeve part so right sides are facing because we've pushed it in the right way around and your dress was the wrong way around so it sits just nicely in place now we have a line of e-stitching around this top corner so on a long stitch just do a line of stitching between your markings and then you can pull those threads and that will help you ease that in the rest of the way when you're stitching it now at the bottom of your dress, fold back your facing piece the other way, stitch along the bottom, trim away this excess here and then you're ready to turn it through. So on the wrong side now it will look like this. Now you can overlock this hem and then stitch it in place. Just check if it's the right length for you at this point before you do that. Do that on both sides. Then you can continue your stitching to the bottom and I will also do a line of stitching down this side a few millimetres away from the edge. It's up to you whether you do that or just leave it with the one. You need to carry on this stitching from here also. Then we're ready to do our buttonholes and buttons. So use your buttonhole guide to remake your markings if they've now worn off. I'm just hemming the dress now before I do the buttons. So here's my buttonhole guide and what I've done is I've marked each one with a pin going this way because I'm finding the chalk doesn't show up. So I put my pins this way ready for doing my buttonholes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me today. I've had fun making this. Have you sewn this pattern before? Please let us know in the comments below and remember to include any photographs. We always love to see them. I think this would look fabulous in a range of um, fabrics. Maybe a chambray like the ones on the cover or another one of our exclusive Minerva prints would look brilliant in this. I'd love to see what you've been up to, so if you make a free account, please remember to include them and then I can get to see all your wonderful makes. Remember, if you like and follow Minerva, you'll get more video content like this every week. More sew-alongs, more inspiration. 
Well, that's all for today. But I hope to be back with another sew along really soon. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.